This week on USG, we're back out at the JCC and we're going to be spending a lot of time in the bunker now looking at some simple fundamentals on how to get out of the bunker more consistently as well as the trouble shot, the real plug lie and help you to get on the green more efficiently and perhaps cut out those double bogeys. So Brett, this is going to be an interesting segment but uh, very simple fundamentals, a little bit of a contradiction to the fundamentals that you learnt yep. with the short game um, around the greens in last week's show but I think you're going to take to it uh, quite quickly. I look forward to it. I'm happy to be in sand and not in water. <laughs> no. No, it's good. This used to be a good part of my game. Okay, right. And I'll just have the club for a second. Now, on the previous shows, Brett, we worked on chipping where you've got to take the ball first, then the divot. So it's all left hand. Now, in this scenario here, it's the exact opposite. <laughs> now, again, you said to me, oh, God, now we're going to confuse me. No, the game never contradicts itself. Yep. You now want to enter the ground behind the ball. So you now use your right hand. So what happens, you've got one basic fault. Your club face is too square. It's not open. Now going to the viewer, the sand dine, as you know, has got the bigger flange of any club in the bag. Yep. Now the minute you open it up, you've got more surface area hitting the sand, so you get what we call bounce. If you go in square and release your right hand too early, your toe enters the ground, you now dig in. It's very similar to uh, the shuttle coming back to Earth. If it comes in too shallow, it bounces off the atmosphere into eternity. If it comes in too steep, it burns out. It's the same principle here. If you come in shallow, the club's going to bounce, the ball's going to pop up. If you come in too steep, you're going to dig. If you'll just stand here, I'm just going to give you an idea now. Now the first thing I'm going to do here, Brett, is open my club face up. Now again to the viewer, this is very important. An awful lot of people grab the club or grip the club normally and then do this. <laughs> That's not an open club face. Okay. You've got to open the club face and another thing that they do, ad nauseum. That is not an open club face. Can I address the ball from here? No. So all you do, quite simply, is put the club face square and just rotate this to there. Now the key is, now grip the club normally. Now you'll notice it's straightforward logic, it's actually painfully simple. If I now release my right hand correctly, I'm going to hit the ball fat, which I want to do, but look at the club face, it stays open. Simple as that. Yeah. So I set myself up, I take a very wide stance because I want a solid base. Club face open. Now from here, again the complete opposite to, to chipping. You still use your shoulders but with no wrists in chipping, I want you to be hyperactive with your wrists in bunker play. So what we're doing here, I take the club slightly outside the line, cock my wrists, once I've completed my turn, I now don't pull with my left, I throw my right hand two inches behind the ball and by the club face being open, you will see that the club face stays open, the, the ball just pops up and dies. Let me just explain to you, or show you. There. Now I'm going to turn and release the club at the ball. Now watch. Now you can see the ball stop. Yep. Now the key here. Okay, wide stance, yeah? Wide stance. Now you see your club face is nearly square. I want you to open it up. There. Even more. That's it. Now, now grip the club normally. Let go. Right, now just grip the club normally. 
unbelievable. Now forget what it looks like. <laughs> you can't, you now from that position, you cannot shut the face. And where's the ball in my stance? It's irrelevant. Okay. The key now is to enter the ground two inches behind the ball with your right hand. Now you're squaring the blade up again. Open it. Now grip. That's it. Now, cock your wrists and hit down and through with your right hand. Slightly outside the line, as hard as you like. Again. Now hang on. The other thing is to dress the ball in the toe. You've got the heel. Just move two inches away from the ball. That's it. Now hit the sand as hard as you like with the right hand. Okay, just that's good, but just hit a little bit harder. Don't be afraid to hit flat out down. Hit down as hard as you can. Keep going. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Now the minute you've got the confidence to stay still and hit behind the ball, that will happen all day. It's quite incredible. And again, you will understand that there's no substitute for practice. Well, Jay, I think we're talking about a very important part of the game as far as technology is concerned. And again, range finders and the GPS systems. They're speeding up play, making people more efficient and effective on the golf course. So tell us a little bit about a couple of the models that you got here today. I brought a selection of product here, Don, just so that we can show the viewers at home. You know, some guys don't like, uh, you know, actually physically yeah. holding the, 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 the Bushnell or yeah. a laser finding device okay. like this. Instead, some guys find it a little bit, of, a little bit shaky and, you know, yeah. sometimes they just want to look at the watch. Yeah. So essentially, I just want to talk firstly about the Bushnell Z6, which is the latest, and this comes with vivid display. Okay. In, the, in the standard Tour V3 and V3 slope, we've got one of the Tour V3s. Yes. That when you look through the crosshairs, they're black. Okay? okay. These particular ones come up as red optics, uh -huh. and the vivid display is absolutely crystal clear. So when you're lining something up, yeah. it works two ways. First of all, you can see the surroundings, so yeah. you can see if there's a raised trap on the right-hand okay. side or the water cuts in, or whatever the case is. Then the crosshair is absolutely pinpointed, and if you're a little bit shaky, it's got, what they've got pin-seeking technology. So the pin-seeking technology essentially finds the pin. Once it locks onto the pin, it gives you a jolt in your hand. So it's really quite nifty. Nice. So with, you know, when, when you get the right distance, it'll also, if you go with the one with slope, it'll tell you how much it is if, if you're going uphill or downhill. So obviously if you're going uphill, it'll add a little bit on, nice. and if you're going downhill, it'll take a little bit off, which is really nice. The only thing is that cannot be used for competition play. Okay. So for all the good amateurs out there that are playing in tournaments or whatever the case is, do not buy the option that allows for slope. You okay. know, for the average okay. hacker that wants to go out there and enjoy his game, I think it's an unbelievable uh, piece of equipment. Hold that okay. for me, don't want to talk to you about these. This is, these are basically watches. And Don, the thing I love about the Bushnell brand is that 94% of US tour caddies use Bushnell. Okay. So you know when guys are doing it for their living, yeah. it's, you, you know that you're using a quality yeah. product. Okay? The Bushnell Neo watch is an incredible item, holds 25,000 golf courses. Chances are the golf course you're playing, yeah. it'll be on the watch. It's so easy to use. I'm a, I'm a bit of a technophobe. Yeah. I don't like uh, all the gadgets and yeah. buttons. Ever. You charge the watch the night before, you pitch up at the course, you put it on, It'll tell you we're at Bryanston, or we're at Country Club Johannesburg, or we're at, at, at Durban Country Club. It'll just pick it up immediately. It'll tell you the first hole, 364 meters, or whatever the case may be. And then as you progress down the hole, it gets shorter and shorter. Yeah. Gives you three distances, front, middle, and back. And that, for me, is all you need. You know, the, the oh, all guys good. are always in the amateur golfer. You know, you teach them. They generally will take a seven iron. They say, "Well, I hit my 750 meters." So they look at the 150 marker. It says 150. Yeah. The pin might be sitting in the back left por portion of the yeah. green. You might have 180 by the yeah. time you finish. So when you've got this thing, it'll tell you you've got 178, 180. So what will you take? You won't take a seven. You yeah. might take a five iron, sure. and that is going to save you shots. Very the Garmin Approach S4 is a proper product. This is the most amazing thing. It has got front, middle, and back. It's got all the edges of the bunkers, edges of the Jeez. waters. And if you're a bit of a workaholic like myself who likes to you know, know what's going on at my store, yeah. you can link it with your phone, which is very important. Yeah, so it's a really clever item. It's touch screen. So if you want to move the pin to the back right quadrant or the yeah. bottom left corner, whatever the case may be, you can do it and it'll give you an exact distance. It gives you 10 hours of golf time. So if you charge it once, you're probably able to get two rounds of golf in, depending on how slowly you play. So this item over here, over 30,000 golf course on this particular one. 
Okay. So uh, it's, a, it's a good item. It's, it's, it retails for 4899, which is quite pricey. Yeah. But once you've bought it, it's going to save you shots, you know. Sure. And it's, it's the kind of thing. It's very durable. It's waterproof up to 10 meters, uh, you know. Yeah. And it's shockproof. So to a, to a point, it's, it's fairly indestructible. But also attractive, you know. It's, it's yeah, nice looking. Nice. They come in white yeah. and black. So for the ladies, we sell a lot of white to the ladies. Yeah. And the black ones are very. They give you your time. They tell you how far you've walked and they send you your messages if you really want them. So I think a Garmin have really got this thing on toast. They really are good at what they do. Fantastic. I think all imperative, everybody should have one form of these GPS or range finders. So there's something the for everybody. Which Definitely. Is nice. Thank you, Joe. Thanks. Now this is the one that fascinates me most. The plug line. Now that's dead. <laughs> but actually it's not. It's a tough shot to hit close because there's a big lip here. But all I do now, instead of opening the club face where I get bounce and hit the ball in the teeth, all I'm going to do now is shut the face down. So it's now the exact opposite. I've now shut the face, but I mean shut. You can see <laughs> there. Now all I do from here is cock my wrists, no follow through, and just chop straight down Again, two inches behind the ball with my right hand. What will happen now, the club will just dig straight into the sand and the ball will pop. But you must understand there is no backspin at all. None. Now just watch. This is not nearly as tough as it looks. Now from there, I'm going to cock my wrist and just hit straight down. Now watch. Now you see, it just pops up and it runs. Now that shot is virtually impossible, you know, to hit it close. Yeah, yeah. But look at the hole I've dug. Try it. So you don't, there's no follow through, eh? No, well there's no need for it because you're hitting straight down. Now shut the club face, more. Right, now just pick the club up and hit two inches as hard as you can. Boom. It's unbelievable. Now that again to the viewer, Gives you the idea of hitting down and through the ball. Most important, hitting down. There's not one shot in golf where you get under and lift it. Now just hit down as hard as you can. Boom. It's unbelievable. Jeez. It's unbelievable. That is amazing. On this week's Echelon Did You See That Moment, we take a look back to the 1994 British Open at Turnbury, where Zimbabwe's Nick Price came to the 17th hole, two shots behind leader Jasper Parnovic. Price's second shot came to rest at the back of the green, leaving himself a 65-footer across the green. He made the putt, and it resulted in a three-shot swing, giving him a great chance to walk down the 18th hole with a one-shot lead, and ultimately, his first British Open title. Right, Brett, now we get the final one. You've short-sighted yourself, which is a cardinal sin in the pro ranks, to hit a dumb shot when the flag's up tight and you miss the green right. Always miss the green away from the flag. This scenario here now is the exact opposite to the, you know, the plug line. But now you open the club up absolutely wide open. Now I grip it normally. Now from here, it's actually an awful lot easier than you think. I now don't use my shoulders at all. I cock violently straight up here and literally throw the back of the club down at the ball with my right hand and keep the shoulders going through the ball. You will see it just pops up with no stop at all and it's an awful lot easier than it looks. Now watch, there we go. I rehearse very steep and then hit down violently with my right hand. Now watch. Now you see there, there's no stop at all. It just pops straight up and dies. Try it. Wow. No, no, this is, it's actually easier than you think. But as Donald said earlier, keep your head no, wide open. No, no, wide, wide, wide. There. No way. Yes, you, you're going to die. Yes. Now grip normally. Brilliant. 
Now take the club outside the line and incredibly steep. Brilliant. Now hit down as hard as you can with the right with hand. With the right hand. Okay. Again. Now again, just address the yeah, ball. I move my head, yeah. Yeah. Feel. And address the ball out the side of the toe. No, that's in the heel. Move away. Right. Now violently cock the wrists. Now again, just watch I'm what happens. My body, yeah. You're just not hitting it hard enough. You have no idea how hard you can actually hit the ball and it doesn't go anywhere. Brilliant. Again. Look at the spin. Yeah. It's just, just so weird. Look at this. Yo. That is amazing. That's too much. No, but you see. Again, this should fascinate you. <laughs> no, but you're not even concentrating. You haven't skinned one. Yeah. Because you're hitting with your right hand. Now, when you get a bit of confidence, well, now that, that to me... went over. No, no. That's how I coach my young youngsters. To try and get the ball, the club going, and the ball doesn't go anywhere. That just shows your club is staying open. There we go. Unbelievable. Sure. No I mean, something that I, I mean, that just defies all logic to my head. Oh, of course it does. Of course it does. Well, Brett, I really want to thank you for coming on the show, and I just hope that the main swing, you don't move laterally, you turn. Yeah. Chipping left hand, bunkers right hand has helped you. I hope. Come on. Been friend. unbelievable. All makes a lot of sense. I just hope I can apply it. I'm going to get up there and start practicing. Well again there is no substitute for practice. Yeah. But one thing I guarantee you, that the minute you start understanding it, which you do now, your practice will now pay dividends. And funny enough, when you're not, you know, leaving them in the bunker and skinning them, mm -hmm. you actually enjoy practice because you're starting to hit the ball correctly sure. and no one ever gets tired of hitting a ball well. Yeah. Again, Brett, thank you. Thank you. Thank, you. thank you. Lovely. Well, Brett, we, we really put you through your paces there for the last few hours, and it's very intensive, but yeah. I think you did very well. How does that compare to your ordeal in 28 hours in the ocean? Well, Don, I, I, fortunately, I got the swimming right to be here for this lesson. I didn't get that right, but I, what was so fascinating for me is learning the principles, you know. Yeah. It's just, and, and when you apply them and can, can get it right, it's like I applied the swimming principle, yeah. you know. Focus, I only had a few choices. I have to have discipline, I have to have structure, and applying those, it's the same as, you know, it boils down to anything in life. I think if we, if we set our mind to do something and you, and you spend the time practicing and focusing and doing what you need to, yeah. at the end of it, you're going to get the result you want. You think. But it no. was great. I loved it. Thank you. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure. But now, that, you know, the, the really important stuff, you know, I think we, you get to meet people in, li in life that have been ex, you know, war veterans and things like that that have faced life and death situations, but it's almost instantaneous. You know, they've had to yeah. use instinct. You've got to confront, you know, your fate for 28 hours. I mean, that has got to be one of the most unique situations ever that somebody's lived to talk about. And that's what fascinates sure. me. So, you know, your strength of character, your ability to keep your focus, keep your mind in the right place. And, you know, you're in the water now. You, you said you got a little bit frantic and almost hysterical. What's the next step? How do you get focused now and then move from there? You know, I, for me it was really interesting because I've reflected back on this. It was unbelievable that in that 28 hours I never felt any fear. I think I knew I was dead. So okay. it was no, going, no point in panicking and getting scared. It was just a question in my mind was how, how I was going to die. And then the amazing life force that takes over and just says, you know what, you, you've got two choices, live or die, and yeah. I'm choosing to live. Now, what do I need to do, you know? Um, the waves were washing all over my head. I couldn't lie on my back initially. I couldn't just tread water because the, the waves were coming from everywhere. And I decided to swim, you know. Okay. I, I, I didn't swim to get anywhere. I swam to keep my head above water, breathe. If a wave was coming, take a breath, get through it. And that was a lot easier to do than then swallowing water because I'd find myself vomiting and that wore me out very quickly. And once I'd made that decision, got into that frame of mind, you know, a lot of people ask me that first 12 hours until my boat came back, what did you think about it? When I reflect back on that, I thought amazing things. You know, I thought about my wife, I thought about good times, 
every time I got sucked back into something, I sang. I sang a lot in the water, and I'm, I, I can't sing to save my life, but I sang, and I also only sang happy songs. If a sad song came in my mind, I put it away and sang it. Sang. And I've got an eclectic sense of, of, of music. You know, I, I'd just seen the Rodriguez show, yeah. Searching for Sugar Man had just come out. And that was such a power story. And I'm like, come on, come on, Brett, swim. And, and I sang a lot of his songs. I talked to my wife, I talked to my kids. I talk, went back to grade one. I mean, actually, even before then, play school. And I remembered everybody, I, I, like I tried to have conversations with everybody that I knew. And that, you know, time flew. And then my boat came back and there was my boat and I knew I was rescued. And they were, I don't know, 150 meters away and they'd seen a piece of polystyrene that they thought it was my little bald head. And they stopped looking at that polystyrene. I could see them and I was shouting and screaming oh, no. and trying to get there. And the current just took me away and they sailed away. And I tell oh. you what. If you want to know a meltdown, I thought I had a meltdown when I fell in the water. That I uh, melted down completely. I saw, and I know it was hallucinations or visions, but whatever you want. But I mean, I saw a boy. I thought, I know, the, I mean, I thought the boy was real, but it wasn't. It was a vision, a hallucination. And I swam to that, got there, that was gone. Then I got stung by jellyfish, and that got me going again. Then I got stung by, uh, then I got bumped by a shark. Then I got hit by the seagull. But all those things you know it's a negative it, and and the human mind is amazing i had these terrible things okay i'm going to die at least oh at least it's going to be quick i'm going to get stung by jellyfish suddenly i was the other side of the jellyfish and i was still alive but they it energized me and it pumped me up and i think that's if we can all equate that to our lives i mean if you're having a bad round of golf yeah. if you change your mindset you yeah. said to me just let it go out of your head yeah. the moment i do that i can yeah. hit a golf ball sure. you know it's when we fill our brains with garbage we yeah it's all the stress in life so I learned a lot of lessons out of that you know and hey I mean I'm just so happy that I'm here beautiful day in in Johannesburg Joburg Country Club having a golf lesson with you guys is it a sense that uh, that you get every day of your life do you, do you yeah. literally count your blessings and think you know I'm yeah, it's so interesting alive. Don I live I live in Cape Town I live in Camp Space so I get to see the sea every day and I've had a couple of days Literally every morning I stand and I have my coffee and I look at the ocean and I, I, I mean, I pinch myself. I, yeah. I cannot believe I'm here. Yeah. But every day is a good day that I'm alive, of I can course. promise you that. Well, you know, you've made a, a real success of your life leading up to this, you know, potential tragedy. And it's, it, it's wonderful to be armed with this experience now yeah. as you go forward in your life with this network that you have and sharing it with so many people. And I know how passionate you are mm. with interacting with the young kids and the charities that you've given. But also, it's so important, I think, in today's world, there's just not too many good news stories out there right now. Mm. And, and to sit and listen to you talk, you know, it makes you kind of want to get out of bed in the next morning and get back in the fight and make something yeah. of your life, doesn't it? I mean, I agree with you 100%. I think the world needs, we just, we, the world's been, the, the financial markets have crashed. The world's been in a sorry place for four years. And my little story, I think anybody, it doesn't matter whether you're a CEO of a company or a street sweeper. Absolutely. Just, it was a good, a good news story, you know, and the world needs good news stories. So, here we are. Hopefully my golf will become good news too as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've no doubt about it. You've, you've got what it takes to play. I mean, you're obviously very athletic and in yeah. great shape, but and you, you've got the ability to get your mind into the, into the right sort of place. But now it's going to become a Hollywood story, isn't it? You're busy making a movie, aren't you? Well, I'm working, we're doing a documentary and filming a... I'm just about to finish my book. In fact, my, the lady who's ghostwriting my book for me is about to fly to Oz next week yeah. to do the final interviews with that side of things. And then I've got a crowd coming out from Singapore to do the documentary and work on a feature film. We've had interest from Hollywood. I don't know, you know, I mean, if it happens, it'll be a great thing. For sure. If it doesn't happen, I'm also, I'm telling my story because I want people to read. For me, it's just such a radical story. Yeah. And not because it's me, that everybody that was involved, from my family, the community in Cape Town, the community in Johannesburg, people did such good things, you know. And, and for me, it was just coming home and, and seeing the good in yeah. people again. Yeah. Because we get jaded, you know, we only, the newspapers are full of nonsense, yeah. TV's full of rubbish, all the bad luck stories, because yeah. bad news sells. Of course. But this was a good news story that sold a lot of papers. Well, it's just been brilliant to be able to share a little bit of it and, and to be in your company. And I know it's, Thank you. you know, you really are in demand right now, and rightly so. And I think everybody, if they have an opportunity to get to listen to you talk, yeah. or certainly read your book. It's an absolute must. But for us, thanks very much. Tom, it's been thank fantastic. you. It's been great. Thank you very much. Pleasure. Thank you.
USG will be taking a break for a few weeks, but be sure to join us in July where we get to meet some amazing new guests.